Welcome back guys and girls. Hope you guys all had a fantastic holiday season. We are rounding out 2019, which is crazy because it's the end of the year, end of a decade, and honestly approaching end of a decade of me on YouTube, which I never would have guessed I'd be doing it for this long. We're back with some Evolve. It's going to be Firestorm Behemoth, the big red rock. I haven't played in a while, so let's go with the guy we love most and rock and roll with a little bit of his awesome love. Thank you so much for all your love on these series, uh, on these videos, this Evolve series. Uh, when I think about my favorite things of the decade, favorite series of the decade, favorite games of the decade, you know, it's pretty hard not to not to think of Evolve. It's pretty freaking hard to look at that squad of Emmett, Hank, Crow, and uh, what is he? Evil Abe, Blitzkrieg Abe. What's this guy's name? I always forget. Renegade Abe, right? Renegade Abe. Anyhow, it's going to be a rough and tumble round against these fooligans, but we are going to do our best. Hit that like button if you enjoy the video. Let me know in the comments how your year has been and what games you're looking forward to in 2020. I think it's going to be an awesome year. Honestly, I was I was getting my Game of the Year 2019 list ready, and, and it's it's still coming. Uh, I was sick for a while. As you guys know, I had that voice that sounded like freaking Elder Kraken, and then I got better for about, I don't know, three days, and then I got sick again. Very, um, <laughs> very, uh, uncool for this time of year. I've been doing so well with not getting sick, and then December was just real, real stressful for a whole lot of, uh, whole lot of reasons. Personal reasons. YouTube has been actually, well, YouTube's stressful too, but you guys and this Evolve has been freaking awesome. It's been a, a blast from the past, if you will. Anyways, as we blast forward... Uh, I think 2020 is going to be great. You know, I was looking at my Game of the Year list for 2019, and it was a hard list to make, not because there were so many good games, but because there were so few that I actually genuinely enjoyed. And, and it wasn't even that there weren't en enough good games this year. I mean, I do think it was a weak year overall. Some people will disagree, but I do think it was a weak year. Um, and, and one of the ways I judge that is almost everyone's Game of the Year list is the same, and it's quite predictable what, what is at the top. You know, you've either got Resident Evil, or you've got Control, or some people who are really into multiplayer, you know, will put, like, Apex Legends pretty hard to find a whole lot of variety there. Anyhow, not many games called to me this year. Not many games appealed to me. I, I didn't find it to be a year that really tapped into what I like. There weren't a lot of games that I said, wow, you know, this is something that I'm super excited for, or super into. That There were games that I thought I would be into. There were games I, I really was excited for on release date, and then I played, and I was like, you know what? This just isn't really my cup of tea. And I think 2020 will be more that, partially because there is next gen, and that just brings about a different kind of game, you know? I don't know, the start of a generation seems to have a different tactic uh, than the middle end of a generation. And I don't think it's going to be as crazy um, as, as I would like, because I was looking at a game of the decade type list, and I was thinking, you know, so many of my favorite games of the decade actually came from the first half of the decade. Very few, honestly, as my controller gets stuck. Thank you, kitten. Um, you, got, you can't knock the cord, man. Um, so many of them were from the first half of the decade because the back half of the decade has been so enamored with games as services and online only and 100 hours of gameplay, and that just doesn't do it for me. Anyhow, I do think 2020 will be awesome. There are some big franchises that are making their way back to the forefront, things like Last of Us 2. I um, mean, you know, obviously we've got Cyberpunk, which is effectively a, a you know, it's not the Witcher franchise, but we'll call it the CD Projekt franchise, right? So you, you can kind of expect what that game is going to be. I'm hoping that Bethesda has a better year because usually they deliver games that I really enjoy and that wasn't the case in, uh, in 2019. And we'll see, you know, 2K, I thought did fantastic this year with Borderlands 3, a, a, a crime that that isn't on more game of the year lists, uh, but hopefully they can come out with some cool titles in 2020, no Bioshock of course, but maybe something else. And then we've got things like Back for Blood that hopefully will fuel my multiplayer um, likes. And I think with next gen you take a, maybe some, some more interesting games, maybe games that are a little more limited in scope, which ironically is I guess a bit more my taste. Games that kind of do it all and try to cover every base and try to be a hundred million hours and the biggest open world ever, those, those aren't really ones that I find myself loving. So if a game like, you know, Godfall ends up being pretty cool as a PS4 launch uh, exclusive, it seems, or launch window exclusive, then that would be freaking neat. But it, it should be, you know, it's a chance where companies know they're going to have insane install bases with their current gen titles and then have an insane, you know, hype and hunger for new games with their next gen 
titles, so you've got a lot going on. My only fear and my hope is that it does not become a year where we see cross-gen titles eating all of the release space. So I don't want every game that comes out on PS4 and Xbox One this year to get a upgraded version on PS5 and Xbox, Xbox, since that's what Phil Spencer wants us to call it. I think, you know, I know some people love seeing those upgrades and they're like, ooh, it's better graphics and it runs better in HDR, blah, blah, blah. That does nothing for me. If I play the game, I don't really want to play it again. The current consoles look good enough. Uh, that I don't I don't need that. I'm I'm not one that's like gonna be out there like wow I guess if Ghost of Tsushima comes out in the summer and then again in the fall I'm gonna buy it like I I could care less. I don't think it's really that big of a deal. I'm very excited for next gen like that's that's my favorite time of gaming um, But I I don't need those upgraded kind of versions also Nintendo really needs to come on in a big way for me because they have a lot of a lot of really highly reviewed great games, but at the same time, like, I find myself not liking them as much as I used to. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure why. It's hard to kind of pinpoint, but, you know, I don't really... I don't know, you know, you could say, oh, maybe you're outgrowing them, but I, I feel like I'm still a child at heart. I still love, like, the properties. I'm so excited for Super Nintendo World. That's, like, my big 2020 goal is to get over to Japan to check that out when it opens at Universal in, in Tokyo, but it's like, I don't... I don't know, something about their games, it, it's, it's not that I'm outgrowing them, it's just that they don't have as much appeal as they used to. Emin is really, really roughing it up here, and I think they, they started off the, the era of Switch being so creative and so bombastic and big and bold, and I feel like they kind of got away from that a little bit. He is healing so well, there is so much going on, maybe going after Emmett first is not the idea, but I will be very sad if I hit this dome and don't get anybody killed, and this might be our chance to get Emmett, but a nice shield there from Hank coming in, supporting his squad like he's supposed to, and we do get the down, we lose a lot of health, that's a great round for the Hunters, it took forever to get Emmett, hopefully that pays dividends in the future as we try to knock him off, but it also hurt tremendously uh, in terms of our health bar and our skill set, well, maybe not our skill set, but our health bar, um, so I, I do expect big things for 2020, I think it's going to be a more fun year for me, I don't know, uh, I didn't find games that exciting this year, it was one of those years where I was much more likely and found more joy out of listening to people talk about games and their enthusiasm than my actual enthusiasm. Games I thought would be great and thought that I'd really get into, like Sekiro, I just I just didn't. And Ubisoft, nothing they put out this year appealed to me. You know, all the, the games like the Rage 2 and uh, Far Cry New Dawn, not New Dawn, New whatever, I don't even remember the name, like, oh, they're so generic and so lame. It's like these do-it-all games. No, I want something that's focused. You know, that's why games like Control, and Resident Evil, Jedi Fallen Order are, are my favorites. And even some indies like Katana Zero that did fantastic work. They pick something and they're great at it. I think more games should really attempt to do that. You don't, you don't need to be a jack-of-all-trades. You don't need to genre bend. You can just be good at one thing. Like, Evolve is really good at making you a monster. You know, will 2020 be the year that we get our next Evolve? I guess, I don't know, I, probably not in terms of Evolve 2, but I'm hoping that Back for Blood or another title might come in and kind of impress us and, and capture our hearts again. There there hasn't been anything since Evolve that on the multiplayer scene has captured my imagination and my enthusiasm the way that Evolve has. So, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. I feel like this is a round where we are gonna really need our stage three powers because I do have it, of course, favoring the Hunters. And, uh, we, we need to be able to match that, right? So, I guess we'll get a fourth ability. It doesn't hurt to have a quartet of chaos. We'll come in blaring the trumpet, the trombone, the saxophone, and the bassoon. All four instruments ready to go. I, I like that. I like that strategy. I like that idea. I'm super... Super excited for the fact that Q1 is huge next year. We don't have to wait till summer for things to get going. I'm sure, you know, some of the best games will come out in the summer, like Last of Us 2. Um, Avengers got pushed, and even though initially the, the impressions were pretty poor, it sounds like that game has come around. Psychonauts 2 is next year? Heck yeah. Personal uh, cult favorite. And just even Final Fantasy 7 Remake, I'm very excited for. The game looks gorgeous. They're, they're re reimagining that in some interesting ways and how they're going to possibly turn one game into like four games I'm very eager to see it's a very interesting and unique way of doing things Crow is here and, and wants to get going I guess um, I didn't really decide who I was going to get first but I guess we'll get Crow 
Um, let's try to rock wall up and hit. Oh, Crow fell behind the wall. It's not really one what I wanted to happen. He's gonna have a chance to get health back. Get some Emmett heals in there. Emmett's not really healing that much, actually. So we do have a chance to kind of pin Crow here. Hit him against the wall. Get him in the tongue blast. And he should go down with one nice hit. That's pretty good. Armor is down. And, and we're going to actually go after Hank. I cannot stand his, his shielding. He does a nice job with that. I think they're going to pick Crow back up, which is fine. But we got Hank pinned in the corner, which is a perfect place for us to be. Trapper is revived. I'm going to try to lock out Hank so we can just get him right here. With the Fissure up against the rock wall, he gets a nice heal, it seems like, from Emmett through the rock wall. A little bit of fire goes a long way. I'm now dealing devastating uh, strikes and strokes against these guys. I don't know if it makes sense to try to get Emmett down, but if I can get Emmett down with this, maybe a chance for us to just go ham. We got the support revive. Emmett is picked back up against the wall for a lot of blasts, and we're going to go tongue action on him. A nice blast. Going to get that Fissure. He's shielded. We're losing health. We may need to go armor up. I'm going to try really hard to get him. He's got so much health. I don't know how he's able to do this so well. It's really impressive the moves he's able to pull off. He's got those heals coming in. He just used his heal. Another shield work, but we're pushing him off into the boundaries uh, of his team's protective sphere. They're doing a great job here. Again, I'm trying to keep him safe, but we've got Emmett on the ropes, and I'm losing a lot of health. This is a really nice engagement by these hunters. A tough squad, one that is, is hard for me to take down. I'm going to use some of my abilities for a change here and try to get Emmett in a burning cone of lava. I am Firestorm Behemoth after all, and it's not going according to plan. We should be able to get him right here. Come on. That tongue should finish him off good. That's the second strike on Emmett, and I gotta go get health. Behemoth has a lot to play with, but I can't be too greedy. You gotta be a little bit careful with the Big Bob to make sure that he doesn't burn out. You know what I'm saying? They're probably gonna pick Emmett back up, and they're gonna get everyone in here, which is not good. But now we do have extra strikes and less health on a lot of the hunters. Maybe I push my luck too far, especially since no one has been killed. It's interesting that no one has gone down. This is a team that is very effective at protecting and covering their butts, covering their, their backs, their butts, their bases. They've got everybody nine to five covered. And then, you know, the second shift has them as well. I, armor regen isn't gonna help me too much in this area. Let's see, what is this defensive boost here? Eat faster, no thank you. I'd love to get a, a an aggressive boost. I don't know that I'm gonna get it. We still have three and a half minutes in the round. And I'd love to try to take these dudes out. Let's see what we can do. Behemoth is... He's actually not looking that much worse for wear. I mean, he's probably feeling it inside. These hulking, husk-like external exoskeletons you know, betray his, his tears inside, maybe. But, you know, some of the games I'm most excited for are the ones that haven't been announced. You know, we know Halo Infinite, obviously, for, for Xbox, but what else do we got going on? What else is going to be a big deal for next gen? It should be a, a very exciting year, and some of the best games have not have been announced, the launch lineups, things of that sort. They're going to save those. We don't even know what the PS5 looks like. Their big event is still off in the distance. When will it be? I'm, I'm assuming in the spring, probably. I don't think they can wait till E3. Medic is finally dead, and now maybe this is our chance to get the job done. Let's see if we can isolate Renegade Abe here. Now, uh, Crow is going to be able to get through. He's got the shielding from Hank. They're doing a nice job, as they love to do. With Emmett dead, this is kind of our chance. We kind of got to go now or never. A miss on the tongue that's going to really come back to hurt us. I'm going to get that. There we go. Armor is destroyed, but Renegade Abe is also going to go down right here. He is out. Okay, good. It's Crow and Hank, and we can push them in a linear fashion to try and ensure that they do not get heals. Actually, if we can get two for the price of one, that'll be nice. Let's try to keep Hank out here. Um, I actually hit Crow with the Rock Wall, which is a great thing to do. We're going to get him with the Tongue Blast there and kill Crow. Now, Hank is the only one left, and he's got to run for 100 seconds, 96 to be exact. And it's just not going to happen. We are going to power truck Hank, and I'm using my health very, 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 very generously here, which may not be the best idea, but when you can lick like that, you got to love where you are, and you got to love Behemoth Firestorm with the Ferocious Wind. Mm, that felt so freaking good. I'm getting in the groove. I'm feeling my uh, my rocks, not oats, because I don't think Behemoth likes oatmeal. But let's run it back, baby. Renegade Abe wanted another chance to touch the Behemoth's big old body. We've got Rogue Val up in here, Wasteland Maggie, and who is the last one? Who do they got? I don't know. It's someone else. Wasteland Maggie, Rogue Val, Renegade Abe, and I think Sunny actually pretty powerful squad. I don't think it'll be as deadly as the last. For some reason, that combo with Emmett, like, it just always causes trouble. Emmett is a nice medic. It's like Slim and Emmett, they've, they've got so much ability to heal themselves and just kind of stay stay alive, and, and my strategy of focusing on medic just 
it, it's tougher. I guess I should, should should mix it up when I see those two, but I find those to be the most difficult matches for me, because even Lazarus, I'm pretty good at keeping an eye on and making sure he doesn't revive, and you kind of know what he's going to do, so it's predictable. Emmett and Slim give me the most trouble. All right. What do we got going on here? I really, I always wish for great single-player games, and I hope that 2020 is full of them, whether it's the Halo Infinite campaign, the Ghost of Tsushima, Single player, you know, Last of Us 2 obviously should be insane. But I'm, I'm also always wishing for a multiplayer game that grabs me, and I, and I hope Back for Blood is able to come out in 2020. I know they've shown nothing, so the, the odds of it actually releasing are probably below 50%. But I hope whether it's that, or, you know, even something as... You know, most people, I think, expect Godfall to be mediocre at best, but maybe something like that does capture us. Or something that we don't even know about. Uh, this moment. I know Hunt Showdown was that for a lot of people this year. I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't like it. I guess I don't like as much when there's like the opportunity for you to get eliminated early. To me, that just feels like such a waste of time. But these Evolve rounds are never a waste of time. So you know, if you do want to put out Evolve 2, I will be ecstatic. I think that would literally, I mean, I don't know if you guys know, I'm like a massive Detroit Lions fan. So kind of like my biggest, you know, like obviously the wishes of like health, happiness, and safety are obviously paramount, but outside of that, it's like, I want the Lions of a successful year, but I feel like an Evolve 2 could kind of come close to me, come close for me, in terms of enthusiasm and excitement, as, like, the Lions doing really well, which, which shows just how much I love Evolve, just how much this game means to me, and when I was looking at making my Game of the Decade list, that's kind of one of the, the big things I looked for, was, like, not just the best games that you could, you know, IGN-style list out sound design, graphics, story and, and give a 10 out of 10, but the ones that, like, have the biggest impact on me and made me the most excited, I had the most fun with, the most, the most joy from, that, that left the biggest mark, the biggest memory. So, of course, Evolve is on that list. I'm curious to know what you guys think of my list. It's kind of a crazy list. It was very easy for me to put together. There was only, like, two... Well, not really one. Like, the 10th the spot took me a bit to figure out, and then the order was almost like it just kind of divined itself. It was really interesting. I thought it would be like something I had to spend hours on, but it's pretty freaking easy for me. Especially because a lot of my favorite games of the 360 era came out right before. A lot of 2009 titles, so I didn't have to worry about that at all. 2008, you know, you don't have to worry about Bioshock and Uncharted 2 and Dead Space and um, Arkham Asylum. So much of that just luckily, <laughs> in this case, sits outside the decade. I've seen some real, what I feel are like, bogus best of decade list. I don't know, Polygon in particular put out one word. I, I guess they're not really too committed to the order, but it's like they've got like Kentucky Route Zero and I don't know, some some very odd games in the top ten and they're putting like Last of Us at like number 40 or something. Man, I don't know. I, I guess like you can think whatever you want. Opinions are totally valid. But how are you going to put Last of Us like 40 or 50? Uh, you don't have to put it at number one. But dude, that game was game was magic. Also, they don't even have Evolve in their top 100, so... Suck it. David Wallace style. Alright. Uh, I hate rushing to three because it activates the timer. You guys know me now. You know that I love to get these stage two engagements. So let's go make it happen. They're tracking me. Um, where are you guys at? My smell cone isn't isn't so great. I got this cold. Which is extra odd for a firestorm behemoth. But I got this cold. And it's keeping me, you know, it's keeping me a little bit stuffy. A little congested. It's hard for me. To figure out exactly where these dudes are when I cannot breathe. Rogue Val is falling incredibly victim. Wow, a nice job there, though. Missing uh, the deadly tongue blast. And we got Sunny, who's now become the target of our affection. Uh, she did not get out the way. I, you know, getting pinned against the dome wall, it basically gives me a free, a free move. Because it's like my, you know, my big rock wall. Except I don't even have to spend it or use it or wait for it to come back. Because it's, it's so easy. And we're going to get a, a death here. Uh, my armor is fine. I don't know. Rogue Val is, I guess, painting her nails. She's off doing something, making sure that... Uh, I don't know. Making sure that Sunny is okay. Wasteland Maggie... No, Wasteland Maggie is... No, Sunny is gone. Wasteland Maggie, she's protecting her, I guess? I don't I don't really know what they're doing, but she does not seem to be healing much at all. Daisy is revived. That was an insane... I mean, honestly, this is probably a silly thing... Wait, how did... Okay, yeah, Daisy is dead. Honestly, if we wanted to, we could probably get him right here. Is that is that too silly? I don't know, sometimes I like to give you guys a show, but I... 
I think we could honestly take them right here. Oh, it's going to be quick. This was not a good team. Sometimes there's just these hunter squads and you're like, what are they doing? How does this even how does this even happen? How can it be so poor, you know? If you want to get Daisy back, Rogue Val, that's okay. I'm totally fine taking out the two of you together. That's not going to be... What the heck? Did that hit a rock? Get my tongue stuck on a, a sharp corner? What the heck happened there? Wasteland is dead. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh! The Dropship King back. Okay, well, you guys are getting the second act that... That uh, I did not think was going to get put on screen. They revive everybody. The dropship drops in at the right time. I forget that it's such a, a quick rumble-tumble rollout after that. But we did get big strikes on a lot of players, um, which is nice and neat. So it should be a pretty solid stage um, three victory. You know we're going to grab it. You know I don't lose the human. Not, not against the AI at least. Alright, let's put this here, put that there, and we're good to go. It's the same setup as before. And I think it's going to be an even sweeter victory. One that tastes nice the whole way through. Last time we were, I don't know, sometimes I feel a little nervous. I don't really ever feel nervous, nervous behemoths because I'm so, I don't know, he, he's so powerful and I, I've kind of got my, my, my look set. Um, but let's get in here and, and get this job done. Alright, boom. Rockwall too deep in the distance. Rogue Val is going to be able to get in here uh, and get some heals on Renegade Abe. Daisy's going to go down. Bye bye. She dead. Renegade Abe burning his shield early. Tongue straight down. You know that's the way to do it. That is honestly the best move that, that Behemoth's got when he goes tongue straight down. It sounds a little gross, but it does do good. Uh, Rogue Val is here. Wasteland Maggie is somewhere over the rainbow. Don't quite know, but everybody is dead, so it don't even matter. Let's try to. Ah, they got both behind the Rockwall. That's not going to be friendly um could pick up renegade Abe. i'm not seeing wasteland maggie did she get killed or stuck on something in the environment don't quite know i guess we can get a double trouble kill and try to go for both at the same time unless wasteland maggie comes out of nowhere and gets a save i think this is going to end quickly and um, let's see if we can separate it does not does it break the beam i don't know it seems like it breaks the beam but i've seen them also heal through it maybe they heal over it i don't quite know sunny is trying to activate her shields get out the way we're going to get a little bit of fire and Brimstone, that's going to be a burn and a smash. Turn around, Rogueval is running. Sunny, your shields are silly. Not going to be too good for me. Let's block her in, lock her in. You're going to have to stay with me. I love it this way. Oh, you got around the corner right before the tongue could touch you. Nobody wants to be licked. Rogueval with the dome, which seems insanely dumb. If you could run for 62 seconds, you might have a shot, but this is not going to work. I love actually when I get to climb over low barrier walls like that. I think it creates a really difficult time for the hunters and a really nice time for my boy Behemoth or any monster. Really, you get kind of get to be pretty vicious. It looks like Wasteland Maggie is actually somewhere out there. The, the dome does not go down. Yes, it does. Okay, Wasteland Maggie. Wasteland Maggie is out there. And I've got 40 seconds to find her, so she just bailed on this, which may have been the smartest, smoothest move yet. Do we think she's at the power relay? Possibly. That could be coded into the AI to keep me from winning. And there's Waste of Mega. I've got 24 seconds, my friends, to make magic happen. All right, let's lock her in. Actually, I locked her out. That wasn't what I wanted to do. I'm just going to have to do about face and use it on the reverse. we got to start getting damage. i got 15 seconds to get this... This wonderful woman killed. Medic is dead. Wasteland Maggie is going to probably honestly survive here. I don't know. If I can get this tongue. Okay, we got to get her in the five. Come on, get the hits. Yes! With two seconds to go. Behemoth reigns supreme and rocks the fire sauce straight to the sandwich into the hunter's mouth. And oops, it was poisonous. Sorry, guys. That is going to be a lot, a lot of sleepy time for all of y'all. And hopefully a fantastic day for all of you out there watching. Thank you guys for making Evolve relevant for me in 2019. Uh, it means so much. I love you all so much. I appreciate it so much. And I'm, I'm so glad that I'm able to continue to do this. And I'm going to continue uh, playing this game into 2020. So stay tuned for the first 2020 Evolve video. We'll get some Hunter action going. And uh, just keep up the support. And I'll try to keep you guys satiated with, with cool videos. And obviously new games as well. Can't just play Evolve exclusively. Or we could, but... You know, that might that might get a little silly over time, but this game is far from silly. In fact, it's one of my favorites of the decade. Thank you. I love you. Have a great day. Until next time, hit that like button. Enjoy the video. Let me know what you want to see next in the comments down below. Any 2020 games you're really looking forward to, I'd love to hear about them. I'll be replying, and we will see you. Wait, drink some hot chocolate. Almost forgot. Can't forget that even after a decade. Drink some hot chocolate, and we will see you all later.